Welcome back everybody. Um, we've already, I've already done a video on purchasing stock, the purchasing cycle for um, paying for stock. But I thought I'd make a quick video on how to pay for non-stock items like services because al although you've configured ERP Next uh, in a production for a production environment, mainly you'd be buying stock. So it's a material request and you've got your um, purchase order and you've got your stock receipt and then of course your purchase invoice um, you would need to pay for services as well like your municipal bill um, if you import some of your stuff your uh, stock invoice would be separately because you would pay an overseas supplier and you don't pay that but once you import it you need to pay your customs VAT and that's on a separate invoice. So now it's not an item where you add 15%. All right. Um, so let me show you how you can do that. There's two ways. I'm just going to do the, let's call it the freehand way. I'll explain that now. If you say purchase invoice, um, let's generate a new purchase invoice. And let's say we, we want to pay a courier. All right. Right, of course, you can enter your supplier um, invoice number there and your the supplier invoice date. Now, of course, now and generally you would click here and select an item that's already on your item list. Now, you can do that for services as well, a non stock stock item. I'll quickly show that to you. There's already an invoice that's generated. Uh, we can just call that up. But the way to do this, and this is why I call it freehand, is you actually complete all the, f the fields by hand. You select the drop down there and you say um, DHL disbursement fees. <clears throat> Good. Uh, unit of measure would be unit. Um, our rate would be, let's say it's 190 Rand. Um, and then, of course, you need to set your expense head. That's the important bit where you select the uh, accounting account that's going to be used. And we want to use somewhere in the 520 range, 5205 freight and forwarding charges all right so uh, that's your expense head uh, it's going to be under indirect expenses freight and forwarding charges uh, your quantity would be one okay so it'll give you an amount of 190 so you've entered this that's why I call it freehand it's perhaps not an accepted term but that's what I'm going to use now of course you get to tax now if you use the tax template here it's going to calculate tax on that 190 now remember this is tax that you need to pay as part of your customs uh, release money which is VAT on some other uh, invoice that you imported you've already paid the supplier but you didn't pay him that now you need to pay that so it's um, 15 percent on another invoice and of course you can use the remarks fields further down in the invoice to take make note of which invoice this vet is for but um, you need to enter the amount so let's say you want to you've imported uh, a large parcel <clears throat> and you've got say let's say 2300 VAT to pay so you just say add a row and you use the freehand drop down there now this won't be on a net total because then it'll calculate the VAT on that 190 rand so you say actual obviously the account head would be VAT and here you can just add your description custom VAT at 15%. That's good. And of course your amount, let's say 2,300 Rand. There we go. Uh, and of course your total amount would then be 
2490, which is 2300 plus the um, 190. Okay. So that's how you would enter a, um, an invoice. As I say, I call it freehand style. And you can submit that. Of course, there's the purchase invoice. It says unpaid. Now you just need to make a payment. And the payment is done in the same same way. Let me just show you quickly. Here's an invoice that I've already made out, which is all, also uh, a service. Obviously, it's your electricity. There I've actually created an item called municipal expenses. And if you go to the um, your items list, then you will see it's under services. All right, municipal expenses. And if you look there, if you click on that, you'll see that it's abs it's the maintained stock has been um, unticked. All right, it's not included in manufacturing. And if you look at the sales settings, it's not a sales item. All right, so if you set up these services, make sure it's, well, it, 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 it won't work. It's not that it's not going to work if it's a sales item, but you don't want this item to be available for your sales team uh, to be able to invoice. All right, that's the only thing. So that's um, also a way to... Um, uh, handle services item, services invoicing, uh, or paying for services by actually creating uh, an item for that. And you can also see that the code which I use um, is a, let me just get my stock items up. Uh, it's a, I call it a GEX, general expenses item, which is generally a stock item as a co code that starts with SKU. So those are things you can do to dif differentiate so that you can quickly pick up your services items uh, amongst all the other items. Right, that's a quick video just to show you how that can be done.